following the statistics for a sport like basketball can be mind-boggling. In the 1991-92 NBA season, there were over 450 players competing in four divisions and 27 teams. Anytime a player does anything on the court, a statistic is created or changed. How many rebounds, steals, fouls has that player accumulated over a minute, a game, a season? Of the total number of three-point attempts, how many were successful? How many points per team were generated over the entire season? Keeping track of all these statistics is a Herculean task. These magazines and newspapers can help you do it, but it's very easy to become lost in all of the data. If you were so inclined, you could put together the data inside a spreadsheet, if you could fit it all on one page. Even computerized spreadsheets can only give you a slice of the data at a time. By using a tree map, you can display all of the data in a visual and dynamic environment. We put together an application here on the Sun Workstation to display 48 separate attributes for all of the NBA players during the 1991-92 season. Right now, this tree map is displaying the top level, the NBA itself. Its rectangle takes up the entire screen. To display the first level, the four divisions, the screen is sliced into four pieces. Atlantic, Central, Midwest, and Pacific. The fact that these four all belong to the NBA is indicated by their being enclosed within NBA's rectangle, which is still visible on screen to the left and on top of the four divisions. Note that the sizes of the divisions differ slightly. This is because each division size is determined by the number of points made by all of the players in that division. Players in the Midwest made the least amount of points during the season, hence its area is smallest. Displaying the next level reveals why. Midwest only has six teams compared to the seven teams all of the other divisions have. It is not a surprise, then, that its point totals are lower and consequently its area is smaller. Size in a tree map can be determined by many attributes, as you will see. Note that this level was created by slicing up the divisions in the opposite direction. Every time we've introduced a new level, two things have occurred. One, the new level is colored a darker gray to indicate it is deeper in the hierarchy. And two, it is offset from its parents by introducing a space on the left and on top of the rectangle. This offset space can be adjusted upwards via a slider to emphasize the hierarchy, or adjusted downwards to diminish the hierarchy. Restoring our original offset, the final level of the hierarchy is displayed the players. 459 players are represented on this one diagram. Area is still determined by the number of points made over the entire season. Some players are clearly seen to be leaders in this area, such as Chicago's Michael Jordan and Utah's Carl Malone. Others, like those in the Charlotte Hornets, are not doing so well. A player can be selected by clicking the mouse within his rectangle. A white border is displayed around the rectangle when it is highlighted, and the player's name, in this case Vernon Maxwell of the Houston Rockets, is displayed within it, space permitted. For those who crave the actual statistics, a text window can be popped up next to the tree map. This window displays all of the information for this player when the mouse is clicked in his area. Note that the tree map is still completely displayed, only resized to fit its new, smaller area. Different players can produce different outputs, and you can even see outputs for teams as well. Returning to our original diagram, we can display another statistic simultaneously with points by introducing color. Suppose, for example, we want to know the percentage of attempted free throws that were successful for each player. Each player's area could be given a different color depending upon where his percentage fell. Simply selecting this color attribute with the mouse allows us to flood the diagram with color. A predefined range has been assigned to this particular attribute. For example, players with below 10% hits are assigned red, from 10 to 20% hits on free throws assigned orange red, and so on up the line, all the way up to players with 90% hits on free throws being assigned violet. Looking at the diagram, it can be seen that Mark Price of the Cleveland Cavaliers has a high percentage, as indicated by the purple color. Combining both size and color attributes, one could say that Price has accumulated a good amount of points compared to his other teammates, and his free throw percentage is quite high at 95%. This indicates a very strong player. 
The color key can be used to display one color at a time, creating an effective way to filter the players in the diagram. For example, clicking on the 60 to 70 percent range causes only those players with free throw percentages in that range to be assigned the color green. The same can be done for the higher ranges. As the colors change, it is quite simple to see where in the hierarchy the strongest free throw players are located. Mark Price's incredible average is clearly seen here, along with Boston's Larry Bird and Seattle's Ricky Pierce. The color key can be assigned with any range or color the user wants. For example, switching the color to field goal percentages reveals a different color key with less intervals and varying ranges, as indicated by the varying lengths of the bar. This key reflects the fact that many of the players are crowded around 40 to 60 percent. Thus, the intervals are made finer on the right side of the key. The color attribute can be made to reinforce the size attribute. Here, color is chosen as points, the same attribute as size. The larger rectangles now are also given the deepest blues and violets to reflect a large number of points. The smallest rectangles are given the reds and oranges to reflect a low number of points. You probably have noticed that many of the areas on the screen look similar, making comparisons between individual players difficult. The diagram can be altered by using exponential functions to exaggerate the area differences between the rectangles. This slider below the diagram introduces these effects. Moving the slider to the right will change the way the diagram looks. Notice how several of the player's areas assert themselves crowding out those players with lesser point totals. Clearly, it can be seen that Patrick Ewing, Michael Jordan, Carl Malone, and Chris Mullen are the league's highest scorers. By introducing this one effect, information has emerged on the diagram that might not have been evident otherwise. In addition, all of these players can still be viewed in the context of the complete hierarchy. This effect can be removed just as easily. Another way to alter the diagram is to invert the size attribute. Right now, the larger the area, the greater amount of points the player has. This can be inverted at the click of a box to reveal the league's stable of second and third string players. Red dominates the diagram as the point totals reflect the fact that each player scored less than 250 points over the entire season. This effect can be exaggerated to eliminate what's left of the better players. Might some of these low scoring players be bench warmers? The tree map's ability to switch the size attribute can give us the answer. We can check this out for a few players on the Miami Heat by first noting the team's low scores, Babbick, Bennett, and Douglas, all of whom have accumulated only a small number of points for the entire season, as indicated by their large areas. Changing the size attribute to total minutes played while keeping the inversion set creates a diagram where large areas correspond to a low number of minutes played. Miami's area looks quite similar. Babbick, Bennett, and Douglas all appear again. This similarity may not occur everywhere. There are many other factors which affect minutes and points. Incidentally, these three will not be returning to Miami this year. Since tree maps can display so much data, there exists the potential for clutter at various points in the diagram. This diagram is displaying size proportional to total rebounds per game, and color indicates offensive rebounds per game. Cluttered regions of the diagram can be zoomed, thus creating more space for display. Here, We'll zoom into the Atlantic Division. The division is now allocated the entire available space. Zooming can occur on any node in the diagram, such as the Washington bullets down here. The bullets team is clearly displayed with all other effects such as exaggeration and offsets available. The tree map can be zoomed back out just as easily. The ability of tree maps to display and manipulate data has been shown to be extremely capable and flexible. With over 48 numeric attributes associated with each player, a total of 2,304 combinations of size and color are possible. Adding offset, exaggeration, and inversion effects creates literally over 2.3 million visualizations. Control is left to the user to determine exactly how the diagram looks, creating a very personal and customizable environment. Many domains can be visualized. Stock portfolios with size equal to value, color equal to value change over one trading day. Library information using the hierarchies of the Dewey Decimal System or the Library of Congress codes. And other domains such as sales, budget, or medical data.
over one for three maps.